Welcome everybody to another awesome episode of Wine, Hops and Road Stops, shot on location at the Beer Stop in West Hales, and I'm with my good friend and co-host and Star Wars fan, Alan. Alan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I just had to say Star Wars because you're sporting a Star Wars shirt. Yes. And we're, I'm back in. I'm excited about the new Star Wars trailer just to say, just to get it off my chest right now. Yeah, you see the new trailer, you know, gets looking forward to, what is it, the eight month countdown? Yeah. Until I, the movie yeah. comes out, so. You know, when, the, when the trailer premiered, I had a beer. I'll say that. Okay. I sat down, cracked over the beer to watch it, of course. Yeah. And we got a bunch of beers here today yes. to try because it's springtime. What Finally. do we have in front of us? Well, like I said last episode, this year, everything's about the fruit. So we got uh, six or seven different fruit uh, combinations. And instead of just the normal wheat beers and fruit, this year they're IPAs, pale ales, Berliner Weisses, a whole spectrum of different flavors, including some uh, water beers. Water beers? Yes, <laughs> seltzers. Oh, okay. All right. With alcohol. Some we haven't really touched on that much here Not on, at all. on the show, but I'm excited to do that. It's growing as a category, but you never know is it growing as a category because there was zero. So now some people are trying it. So it's a trend now. We'll see in two years or three years if it holds. Yeah, all right, great. Well, you know what? Let's go and move on to some important news that we have to share with you. Miller Coors bails on their beer lines after the Bud Light's corn syrup ads. For 18 months, the companies responsible for Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, Heineken, and Corona planned on launching a non-brand specific national ad campaign encouraging us to keep drinking beer. Now, representatives from Anheuser-Busch InBev have claimed the biggest threat to beer isn't beer itself, but growing sales of other alcoholic beverages like wine and spirits. But if other breweries aren't the enemy, it was really hard to tell during the Super Bowl when Bud Light ran an attack ad against its two biggest competitors, Miller Light and Coors Light, for using cord syrup in their beer. And by the end of February, this appeared to have derailed this alliance. Now, I didn't even know anything about this. You told me about this last week. Yeah, it's really interesting because... As the world spectrum of beer, Bud Miller Coors is losing their pace. Believe it or not, the number one beer in the world is now from China. Uh, and China has three of the top ten beers in the world. Mm -hmm. So that market is growing, and even Budweiser is growing over there. But Bud kind of threw that whole corn syrup ad in, which I thought was hysterical. Yeah. And then Miller came back with their own ad with the Blue Knight, which I thought was also hysterical. But it just kind of really just threw a monkey wrench into companies trying to save their market share. And they were all supposed to really sit down and really talk about all this, and that's yeah. gone now, right? Yeah, because, and, and the biggest problem they're having is the young 21-something drinker. They're drinking microbrews, for the most part. Right. And microbrews are having double-digit increase of sales, increase of sales, increase of sales. Do you know what the only domestic increase of sales was? We'll, we'll test you on that. I don't know. Take a guess, which one? Bud. Michelob Ultra. Oh, okay. I Mostly, I think that's going along with that low carb and people who are on the low carb diet, which I think we've both tried here and there. I did. I, I can't. You do know. That. So, uh, but Michelob Ultra is the only domestic beer that had increased uh, percentage in the last year. It's a beautiful day out today. Spring has arrived, and with spring and the warm weather comes the beer and wine festivals. I mean, you could throw a rock and hit a beer and wine festival. Yep. You know, unlike it was like 10, 15 years ago. So there's many beer and wine festivals to go to. Hazelton has their own. It's August 24th, the Hazelton Beer Fest, and it's a really great time. It keeps getting better and better every year. I'll You're, be there. Yep, I'll be there as well. I'll be pouring beers. Here are some tips for you to follow <laughs> to get the most out of your experience. Number one, go early in the day if tasting is your main goal. Many breweries and wineries will run out of their most popular beers and wines by late afternoon, especially if it's a two-day event. Number two, and this really goes for wine. I guess I could go for a beer too, but number two, it's okay to spit. <laughs> really, it is. It's okay to spit, especially if you're trying wine. It'll keep you from ingesting too many different wines or beers and, you know, all that stuff sloshing around your belly sometimes doesn't make you feel too good. So if you don't like something, pour it out or spit it out or whatever. You yeah. Know. Number three, don't wear fancy shoes. Most wine festivals and a lot of beer festivals are outside. Heels get stuck, rain makes for mud and other stuff. And just, if you're a woman, you don't want to tramp around in, in your high heels, you're probably going to fall. I've seen many <laughs> take headers <laughs> at these things, so... Number four, of course, eat. It does not take that many tastes to impact many people. Make sure you have food in your stomach. Number five, this really goes for the wine again. To avoid red teeth, rinse with water and chew gum when you can. You don't want to be walking around with, you know, red teeth and stuff <laughs> at a wine festival. Remember, some wines contain just as much or more alcohol by volume than a beer. So one glass of wine it may equal one beer, right? so get a designated driver. Be careful. Absolutely, yeah. 
And the good part is that most of the wine festivals, designated drivers get in at a much reduced price. Yeah. Be smart. And you can still enjoy a lot of the great foods. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's all we have right here. So we're gonna go to break, but when we come back, it's springtime, we're gonna try some spring beers, we're gonna try some seltzers and fruit beers and all kind of good stuff on wine, hops and road stuff, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wine Hops and Road Stops on location at the Beer Stop. And right now, we're gonna start tasting some beers, some spring beers. So what do we have in front of us again? We got, we got a whole bunch of different fruit flavors. Like I said, this year, orange, peach, mango, pomegranate. I mean, as many fruits as you can name, there's a beer for that uh, one. So we're gonna jump in and start with more of the lighter ones. Okay. And this is from Victory. This is their Twisted Monkey. A little play on their Golden Monkey. Golden monkey, and they also have a sour monkey. Yep, and then this is their mango. Oh, that's good. Now this isn't this isn't a sour beer, though. No, it isn't. But it, it does it definitely a hint of sour. You yeah. see, it's a Belgian white, so that's why I kind of put it on the end. Oh, great. But I would definitely put that more in a uh, kind of a sour on training wheels. Mm -hmm. That's why I like it. I'm not huge on the sours. Nice. It's refreshing. But there, yeah, there's just a little hint of that in mm -hmm. there. Yeah that's, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. It's not, and now, how big is this guy? 5.8. So not crazy. No, no, he's average, yeah. he's average uh, craft beer. Yeah. Very good beer. I like that. Yeah. And along with all these beers, a lot of them are hazy and juicy. Mm. That's just another one of those. It's those buzzwords that I'm yep. not really sure what they mean sometimes. But. Yep, so this is one hazy summer. This is a pale ale. And this is by Harpoon? By Harpoon, yep. Okay, and I you can really get the citrus tones out of yeah, it. Yeah, I can smell that already. Well, that's another one. Yeah, I mean that's just a nice, easy drinking pale ale. Sometimes with these lighter beers, there's not a lot of flavor to them. Mm -hmm. There's not this. Uh, this has a decent mm -hmm. amount of flavor. And not only that, though, you still get a little bit of bite at the end that you know you're drinking almost like a Sierra Nevada of that pale ale. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're getting that that finish is still of that mm -hmm. ale, that ale finish, mm -hmm. which is good because a lot of times with these lighter beers. You don't get that. It's like almost like I'm missing it. I'm yeah, missing it, it something. You know, you drink it and then the flavor is gone immediately. Yeah. All right, next one could, could be a dark horse here. Soft serve pineapple colada from Captain Lawrence. It is a milkshake IPA. Indian pale ale with pineapple, coconut, milk, sugar, and vanilla. Wow. So 7.5% alcohol. So we're getting a little bit bigger. I'm really interested in this one though because that's a lot of ingredients you just read off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and. <laughs> well. Not much to the nose. No, there's not. There's not. I, I was expecting something, something. overbearing, yeah. you know, or something a little stronger. Definitely get the pineapple-ish. Yeah. Don't get the IPA though. No, no, but there is some kind of like milk taste to mm -hmm. it. A little, uh, almost creaminess. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Like it, <laughs> that means it's dangerous. <laughs> to me. If I could put it down easy, I'll drink that whole can and. And you'll smile. You'll <laughs> Next one is from Sweetwater, Peach Love and Happiness. Now this is a Berliner Weiss. Okay. So this, this should have a little bit of that. Berliner Weiss, explain to me. Berliner Weiss is a cross between a wheat beer and kind of getting into that sour tones. Okay. Uh, the Berliner, they kind of let the yeast sour a little bit mm. before they put it in the mash. I can smell it. Yeah, I can smell that. Yeah, that's the Berliner Weiss. Oh, 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 tart. Mm. Very tart. Ooh, gonna back off a little bit here. Whoa! But not sour though. It's weird. <laughs> I can't say you didn't warn me. <laughs> we, we've done a Berliner Weisses style yes. before, and you hated yes. that one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you like Berliner Weisses, this is a nice representation. I'm not gonna say I hate it. It's just it would be one and done for me. Okay. It's a good sharing beer. Everybody try yeah. it a little. Yeah. And um, there wasn't a lot of. Not a lot of peach. I was gonna say, yeah, there wasn't a lot of peach to it. No. I was figuring it was gonna be more of a peach taste, but there is citrus, yeah. but not necessarily peach. No, you could pay, I mean, if you didn't know it was peach, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's peach. Next one, for those of you who know Schoenhofer from Germany, who has their grapefruit beer, this is their new pomegranate. And they always say their grapefruit beer is the worst beer I've ever had. Because? It but doesn't it's the taste like best beer. grapefruit juice I've ever had. It doesn't taste like beer. We did it have it before. Not, it does not want... taste like grapefruit juice. It's, it's juice for it, adults. Right. It does, and it's we... very low in alcohol, too. You're at about two and a half percent alcohol. Doesn't taste like a beer to me. No, it's it's fruit it's juice. Yeah. 
I've had this for breakfast. <laughs> I would. Yeah. No, it's nice. It's a good flavor. Pomegranate's not my favorite. If you like pomegranate, drink it. It's good. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's good. I mean, it doesn't taste like a beer, though. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting into it's something that seltzer. isn't a beer. Yes, and I've never had any of them before. This is a Bon and Vive, the Black Cherry Rosemary. Okay. Four and a half percent alcohol. And Black I guess with seltzer. seltzers, they're just kind of throwing everything in, Black Cherry and Rosemary. Oof. You can smell Whoa, the black cherry. Black cherry. Oh, tastes man. like a seltzer, sir. Yeah, I'd have to put something in it. <laughs> I want to put like gin in it or something. <laughs> I better not. I was, say, I was gonna really. <laughs> That's what it needs. It needs like it, it. It. It's like it needs vodka or gin or something in this. It's you still know you're drinking seltzer. There just yeah. happens to be alcohol in it, but you can't taste alcohol. Yeah. Rum. I put rum in this. Rum? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not, no, don't do that. Yeah. All right, next one is Cape Line, their Blackberry Mojito. That one does have a little bit more flavor to it. it smells like blackberry brandy, I'll tell yeah. you that, which is nice. <laughs> but still extremely light. Um, definitely not my cup of tea. No, but if I had to pick between two of them, I'd pick this one. Yeah, yeah, there, there's more to it. There's less seltzer taste, mm -hmm. more flavor. Yeah, I'll, still, I'll still go with the uh, One Hazy Summer as kind of my pick. I thought that one was the best. I'm going to say this first one here. I really like this one. This was the... Twisted Monkey. Twisted Monkey. Yeah. yeah. So there's our beers for this week. And if you like what we're doing here, facebook.com slash wine. Hops and Road Stops. It's our Facebook page. Join us there. Ask us whatever you want. We'll try to answer it on an upcoming show. And when we come back, Road Stop up to the... Lake Walpole Pack area to go visit our friends at the Walpole Pack Brewing Company. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's more Wine Hops and Road Stops coming up next. Our Road Stop today is a return to Walpole Pack Brewing Company. And I'm with Logan, the head brewer here. Logan, first of all, I want to thank you for coming back on the show as one of the major sponsors of Wine Hops and Road Stops. Absolutely. We appreciate you coming back. Someone that doesn't know much about Wall and Paul Pack Brewing Company, real quick, give us the history. So we opened in September of the end of September in 2017, so just like a year and a half ago or so. We have a 20 barrel brew house. Uh, it's family owned, so they live. They have a house right on the lake here. And, yeah. and you're a pretty new brewery, and you already won some awards, some pretty prestigious awards too. Uh, yeah, we did at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, the first year they did their beer competition. So we won four different awards there. So uh, we were thrilled about that because um, it was bre any brewery in Pennsylvania could enter. So we were, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of breweries in Pennsylvania. Yeah, a lot so. of good breweries and a lot of competition. Uh, our largemouth IPA, which is our, like our flagship IPA, took first in the IPA under seven and a half percent category. Um, our Wet Hop Farmhouse took second in the Belgian category, and then our first anniversary ale, which was a rum barrel aged Belgian strong, took third place in the barrel aged category. And then for the Wet Hop Farmhouse, we also won the first ever Pennsylvania uh, PA Preferred Legacy Award. These awards are very well deserved because you guys make some great beer. Last Thanks. time I was here, I couldn't stop talking about the beer on the way home with our cameraman, Joe. So I'm glad to be back and I'm glad to be sampling some new beers that you guys are doing. What do we have in front of us today? What are we talking about? Uh, spring beers? Yeah, yeah. So these are our spring seasonals. Pretty much every season we do like a, a lager and an IPA. Uh, so for the spring, we ended up doing a Pilsner, which we did a Pilsner by the same name last year, um, but this is a different recipe. And then this is our red IPA. Okay. So Pilsner, just a nice, light, uh, easy drinking German style Pils. And you said it's, it's the same name as last time, but the, the recipe is a little different? Yeah, and that only happened because of the government shutdown. We weren't able ah, to get approvals, so. Well, has a nice nose on it. Uh, like a German Pilsner kind of nose to it. Yep. Yeah, so this was all German malt and hops. And I like to say it's just beer-flavored beer. That's kind of what I like to drink, so that's what I brewed. 
So ABV is 5%, so not too high. And IBU was 35, so not too bitter either. Um, and it's just, like I said, German hops, so that you get that really noble, kind of spicy herbal kind of notes from the hops. Uh, not so much the citrusy and uh, like you would get in an IPA or something. Right. Anyone that likes domestic beers, I always point to the Pilsners first. Like this would be a good entry beer for someone who is your Coors Light fan, Miller Light fan, Budweiser fan. Absolutely. That's a lot of those domestic beers are actually lagers. So it, I mean, it makes sense to, this would be the next progression. Okay, so next up we have a red IPA. So this is a mixture of a red ale and an IPA? Yeah, basically. So it's gonna be nice and malty like a red ale would be, um, but then it's balanced by a lot of American hops. And this one is called? This is called Seeing Double Red IPA. And why do you call it Seeing Double? Uh, <laughs> is it really strong? It's, the, it's not too strong, okay. but it, I mean, it's 7%, so it's, it has a decent amount of alcohol in it. Um, but it was actually, the idea came, we were gonna do a double red ale, uh, but then we just turned it into a, a red IPA. So the name kind of just stuck. We're gonna get the malt from a red ale mixed with the hops of an IPA. Correct. So, so we're getting best of both worlds here, because I like red ales and I like IPAs. I think this is a, an extremely balanced beer. Um, you definitely get you know, the malt and the hops. It's, oh, not, yeah. it's not like one takes over. I know someone who's gonna, who's gonna really like this. Yeah. My wife loves red ales, but she likes red ales that have a little bit of hoppiness to them. Okay. So I'm always on the lookout for her. I'm always on the lookout for her. <laughs> well, there this you go. This is good. Yeah, so this was uh, a lot of Simcoe and Amarillo hops in here. Um, so Simcoe is pretty like piney, and but you can get some peach and different notes mm -hmm. out of it too. So Simcoe's one of my favorites uh, as far as the hops go. I'm always, whenever I see a, a beer made with Simcoe, I always kind of gravitate to it. I like the taste of, of the Simcoe hop. And Absolutely. You can, oh yeah, I could taste it in there. Yeah. So we actually have a couple beers coming out. Um, I did a Goza. Um, which is a kettle sour beer. Um, nice, light, little tart. Um, and then one we're really excited for is our Paw Pack Amber Lagers coming back, um, which was one of our most popular beers when we opened. And it's been a while, like we let it fade out for a little while, mm -hmm. kind of hopefully build some anticipation. And now it's coming back, so. And that's always been a big seller for you? Yeah, yeah, it's one of our best sellers, I think still, even though we haven't had it for like six, eight months it's still in the top five <clears throat> sellers we've ever had, so. There's a lot of stuff going on in this place and I want to get to all of it. You got another, you got an expansion coming really soon. Probably by the time you're seeing this, the expansion is probably gonna be all already on its way. Yeah, it should be. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we're expanding on the brewery side. We got six new tanks in uh, and our brew pub is expanding. Um, we're gonna have a whole new space, kind of branded a little differently, uh, make it like a, some overflow for the summer because we were packed in here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so we can do some events too. So like just some private events. Uh, we just got the approvals and everything. So uh, we're gonna be starting real soon. You're not just a brew pub. You guys are an eatery too. You guys do some really great food here. We do a seasonal food menu, so every season we get some new new things on there so you, know, you don't get tired of the same old stuff every time you come in. Um, some of our best sellers will keep on, but uh, every, for the most part things rotate and then we're always doing specials on the weekends. Um, we're at, we've actually gotten into doing some beer dinners, which we're going to try to do on a regular basis. We shut down for the night and then we actually set up big long tables and pair one of our beers with a, ni a nice food option. This beer behind me, Resilience IPA. You teamed up with Sierra Nevada. Tell me about how that happened and tell me what that is about. Um, somebody posted that Sierra Nevada was reaching out to breweries, uh, doing a, a special brew to support uh, people that were impacted by the campfire, which is one of the worst wildfires that they've had in California. Um, so Sierra Nevada actually sent out the rec their recipe to any brewery that wanted to. Um, and they actually got some ingredients donated by Country Malt. Every dollar that we make off of this is donated back to Sierra, to Sierra Nevada's fund. And it, it was awesome for us to be able to give back to uh, a community that was in need. 
Thanks for coming on the show again, Logan, and thank you for being a major sponsor of Wine Hops and Road Stops. And thank you for a good, excellent IPA. This is a really, really nice red IPA. I like this. And, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to drink some more of it right now. And that's our Road Stop for this episode. The Walton Paul Pack Brewing Company. Yes, we are back at Vesuvio's Restaurant and Sports Bar. Yes, the new addition to Vesuvio's is a sports bar, and the restaurant has a nude look, but the same atmosphere with great pizza and great service. We have a great addition to the restaurant. We repurposed our upper level to a 17-seat bar. We have, as you can see, nine TVs around the bar. We have the big, beautiful TVs on the wall, so when you walk in, that's one of the first things you see. Uh, we added different styles of seating in, so that way people can be accommodated in different ways. Now, there have been many changes at Vesuvio's recently, but one thing that never changes is the food. Traditional Italian recipes from the family handed down generation to generation, and you can really tell. But don't take my word for it. Listen to what Vesuvio's customers have to say. Well, if you want great food, you have to come to a great place. And this is a great place to all me and my family. I lived in Chicago. We moved from here to Chicago. There's people who say Chicago pizza is the best. And those people are the ones that have not had Vesuvio's pizza. Drove all the way from Chicago back here to eat Vesuvio. Well, we've been using the same recipes that my grandparents taught us, and they've been using it for 43 years. So we're really happy to Learn, have learned from them and been around them for, well, I had my grandmother for 20 years and my grandfather for 29, so I'm pretty lucky the guy to have, to have that much experience with them. So there'll be some menu changes coming up. Um, we're gonna have more bar type food, you know, pretzels, uh, maybe some tater tots, you know, loaded tots, things like that. In addition to their great food, a revamped dining room and new inside bar, Vesuvio's now has a huge selection of beers on tap. Um, it's going to be a mix of, uh, you know, domestics and, and you know, some of the, the staple beers and our really good craft selection is just going to get better. And we're also putting some wines on draft as well from our, our local winery over at Honey Hole. So let's talk about some of the beers. I know you have a relationship with Pizza Boy. Well, Pizza Boy and my family go back many years. Uh, Al Kaminsky used to work for my grandparents up in Hazleton, and he's kept up a really good relationship with our family. Um, and it's been very fruitful for both of us because I and my brother up in wilkes -Barre are one of the few stops where you can there's more than one or two Pizza Boys on draft. The warm weather is just around the corner. The new bar's open. The beers are on draft. The outside deck is about to open. Get down to Vesuvio's. Get yourself a great slice of pizza and a pint of great beer. Perfect place for a quick stop. That's all the time we have on Wine Hops and Road Stops, but before we go, what's new at the beer stop? Well, we do got some big news. By the time this is airing, Three Floyds is finally back in Pennsylvania. It's been about a decade since we've been able to get their beers. Um, very limited quantities of the zombie dust, uh, but Gumball, Alpha King, plenty of quantities of those, so we're all really excited to have them back. Dun 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 Game of Thrones premiered this past week. He's getting more Game of Thrones beer in. Yep, we'll have their four, the last four releases they're releasing coinciding with their opening of the new series. Alma Gang is another solid brewery. Um, I'll try anything from them. All their beers have been well above average. Like, like, like I always say, you know, sometimes people just stick their name on something and it's right. really not that good. There's a few bands yeah. that are guilty of that, I'll say that. Not yeah. Megadeth though, Megadeth beer's good. <laughs> but this Game of Thrones beer, this yeah. one here that he has right now is a King of the North beer. I've had this before, this is an Imperial, Imperial Stout, really good, and you're getting all the new stuff in this coming week. Correct, so, yes. By the time this airs, it'll, it'll be, here. be here. That's all the time we have. Thank you very much, and remember, life is too short to drink bad beer, so get a good beer. Again, for the beer stop. We'll see you next time on Wine Hops and Road Stops. Mm -hmm.